to remain silent and not ask questions. The duration of the trip is two and a half hours. On the seat next to you are gloves, a blindfold, and sunglasses. Put them on. Do not ask questions. Seat next to you are gloves, a blindfold, and sunglasses. Put them on. much longer. We've been on the road about two hours already. You have been instructed to remain silent and not ask questions. The duration of the trip is two and a half hours. Under no circumstances are you to remove the blindfold until instructed to do so.
remove the blindfold now. Thanks. I was beginning to get a little woozy. Just the blindfold, the gloves stay on. Just to know what we're up to. And now that we're all here, I'll begin. But first, I want to assure all of you that my deal with each and every one of you is identical. Each one of you was selected from a distant area, and each one was guaranteed a minimum of $50,000. Now, the total time involved is three days. Question number five? Yeah. Why all this? Just what are we going to do? Well, I think it's obvious. We're going to pull off a job. Big one. And this is going to be perfect. You know, gentlemen, a perfect crime is not so much in its execution, but in being able to get away with it. Whenever a big job is pulled, like the Brinks Hall or the English mail train robbery, almost immediately the full force and power of the law goes into effect. No expense is too great to apprehend the criminals. Now, gentlemen, if I may be blunt, with your past records, we can assume that at least one of you will be under suspicion once the job is finished. Now let us further assume you're forced to talk. What is it you possibly could tell him? You were contacted by a man you didn't know. Sent an airplane ticket, told to fly to Los Angeles, picked up in an automobile, blindfolded, driven approximately two and a half to three hours to a place you've never been to before, haven't the slightest idea where it is. Then you were introduced to six men, all wearing beards with no names, answering only to numbers from one to seven. And what we don't know can't hurt us. Exactly. And the gloves? Fingerprints, of course. In the unlikely event, someone should rediscover this place. So remember, you keep them on at all times. You even sleep with them on. So we remain a mystery to each other. Exactly. Even to my driver. I'm the only one who knows each man's identity. And you must never reveal your names, your past, your family, the city or state that you're from. In short, you have to reveal nothing about yourselves. Your very lives will depend on each man's attitude and action during the mission and on each man's ignorance afterward. Is that understood? Good. Now to simplify things, change into your jumpsuits on your cots. And we'll be cooking for ourselves. We have a stove and a refrigerator stocked with frozen food, beer, and soft drinks. Any questions? Yeah. Exactly what kind of job are we going to be pulling off? You'll learn more about that in the morning. In the meantime, gentlemen, remember, and for the next three days, silence is very, very golden. That's the damnedest thing I've ever heard of. It makes sense to me. I'm afraid I'll talk in my sleep. I'm fine, in case I forget. You thought of everything. How did he contact you? By phone. But he sent me airline tickets and instructions. You mean you never saw him until today? Uh-uh. You? Same. How do we know he's out of letter? You know, there's something about him that's very strange. I don't even know why I'm here. Well, I know why I'm here. $50,000. That's what the man said. 
That's that. It's pretty cagey. What do you think it will be? I don't know. The way he's covered himself, it's got to be Fort Knox. With seven guys? There's something special. answering some of your questions. Now, if this seems to be even more confusing, don't let it worry you. It'll soon be made quite clear. Outside this building, there are shacks denoting the positions indicated on this board. Is that clear? No, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm thick or something. But I've got to know in plans just what are we going to hit. A town. You mean something in a town? No, I mean a town. You mean a bank? Well, there are two banks there, among other things. Two banks? I mean, we're going to hit a whole town. We're going to keep it for three hours and peel it like an orange. Whew. A whole town. Mm -hmm. To be precise, two banks, two supermarkets, a machine shop, and a lumber yard. It'll be on Friday, which is mid-month payday. And that's worth... That's worth, my friend. Between a million two and a million four. This is no ordinary town, gentlemen. This is a new model city. Fat, relaxed, and unsuspecting. But how can a handful of us take a whole town? One wolf can mow all the whole flock of sheep. Imagine what seven can do. Don't give me that. 
You and your pot-smoking friends are grounded. You read me? Oh, man, there's going to be a scene, Pete, a bad scene. You do that, jerk. You tell your old man. I don't give a damn. Now, let's settle this once and for all. Is Pete Anderson to stay on as chief, or do we get us a new man? Look, the question here is whether we establish that this town is run by its council or its chief of police. Now, now, don't get emotional. In my opinion, Pete Anderson is a first-class officer of the law. It isn't easy to get men of his caliber. Nobody doubts his qualification as chief, but uh, well, what we mean is he lacks the proper respect due to this council. Yeah. Furthermore, I don't like the way he handled a particular situation. You mean he won't compromise his office for the whims of some of the city fathers? Are you accusing me of arbitrarily using my office? To the shoe fits. Now, let's be rational. Mr. Mayor. What? I move that the council consider the dismissal of Pete Anderson as police chief and the appointment of a committee to seek a new man for the job. Very well. The council has a resolution before it. Come in, will you? Oh, and call the station and have Officer Harris report to me right away. police cars. We don't even have a decent jail. What happens when something really hits this town? Wellington is a model city. See, we're a good safe distance from big cities, big city crime. And people. Well, I've known you for a long time. I've always had the highest respect for you. Get to it, Mr. Mayor. All right, the, uh, the council wants your resignation. So well, that's it. It was their idea. Now. I, I was against it. They say why? Maybe they just feel the town needs a change. So what is it, Mr. Mayor? Am I being fired for being a lousy cop? Oh, no, you're a damn good cop. Best there is for the money in my book. You bet. But you've ruffled too many feathers, Pete. You see, this town is going places. We've received national attention that it's a nice, quiet, progressive town, great for tourists. We don't want to rock the boat, you know. Uh, we don't want to cast any doubts on our future, right? Mm -hmm. Like having a decent police force. When the time comes, somebody spots this town for a pushover. Now, it's that kind of talk, Pete. Scaring people, making them think the mafia will be here any day. And, Pete, another thing, you uh, sometimes step down pretty hard on people. Take those kids, for instance. You were pretty hard on them. So that's it. Hot smoking punks. I don't know. I guess I thought the law applied to everybody. Maybe I tried too hard. <laughs> I spent most of my life in these points. Eleven years as deputy sheriff. Six years as chief. What do I do now, Mayor? Flush it down the pipes and forget it? Now, I want to tell you, Pete, that on your resignation, that'll be nothing on the record that the council reprimanded you in any way or that you had any action taken against you. It's going to seem strange. Yes? Officer Harris is on his way, Mr. Mayor. Oh, thank you. I thought he'd be okay till the council decides what they want to do. Well, just when am I supposed to resign? Well, that's more or less up to you. All right. Finish up the week. I'll be out by Friday. Uh, Pete, do you mind uh, Officer Harris explaining? Okay. Is that all? Remember, I meant it. You're still number one in my book, and if you ever need a recommendation, you've got it. Thanks. Hell with the council. 
Thanks. Pete, do you know whether you're gonna stay on in town or not? I don't know. I really don't know. Hi, Pete, what's up? <laughs> you're kidding. Nope. I've got another surprise for you. Oh, and what's that? You've got my job till the town council decides what to do. It's a little early in the morning for bad jokes. A joke. I'm out, you're in. Pete. Why? I don't know. I guess I rubbed some people the wrong way. You better watch your step. They're hungry for chiefs around here. They eat them for breakfast. Pete, I don't know what I can handle. I, I, I can't pull it off. I can't do your job. I, I've never had that much responsibility in my life. Just relax. Take it easy. Besides, according to the mayor, nothing exciting ever happens in Wellington. and coordination. Now, the county seat is 75 miles from here, which leaves us approximately three safe hours to complete the mission. Now, all our objectives are within a radius of three blocks. Now, let's take it in order. Number two? Three and I blow the road north of town. Right. As we approach from the south, we all first take care of the south road. You and three will be in charge of the plastiques. Number four? Five and I take care of the telephone exchange. Allowing ten minutes for number six. Seven and I take the police station. Right. Now, there's a police chief and three officers. One will be on duty, the other three will be in their respective homes having lunch. He must call them down to the station. But don't forget, you have only ten minutes before four or five and knock out the phone lines. And then? On the way in from the road, we blow the power station. Right. And now the town is an island. Cut off from the rest of the world. just going to sit out here and drink all night. Maybe. It won't change anything. Mm-hmm. Will, come say goodnight to your father. You all set for bed, boy? Sure, Dad. Dad. Is it, is it true what they say about your goodness, Chief? That's right, son. But why? Oh, maybe I thought we ought to move on, maybe to a big city. You mean it? Sure, wouldn't you like that? A lot more excitement than here in Wellington. Gee, I don't know, Dad. Well, don't let it worry you. I haven't made up my mind about anything. You hop off to bed, huh? Dad. Since you're off the force now, can I hit him? Those kids, I say, are a lousy cop, can't I? You sure can, boy. Hit him one for me, too. Pete, I don't like it. You're telling Will he can go ahead and get into fights at school. Well, at least he can hit back at him. You give them 17 years, and now just because a couple of no-account people want the town for themselves, you... Let them have it. Did you mean what you said to Will about pulling out? Maybe. But you've been here all your life. It's all you know. Why should we move? We've got roots here. You're not a kid anymore, Pete. How are you going to find another job? I'm a man, aren't I? I've got arms and legs. I can work. 
What do you think I am? We don't even know the name of the place or where it is. I'll tell you one thing. Nobody's ever pulled a job like this before. Every cop in the world will be out for us. Wherever it is, we'd better get the hell out fast. <laughs> That's crazy. Maybe he's crazy. Yeah, like a fox. What do you really think? I mean, about him, our fearless leader? Hell, I don't know. Sometimes I think he's a brain, a real genius. Then other times I wonder, what am I doing in the desert playing cops and robbers with some loony? I know what you mean. Got to admit, he's got guts. Yeah, hires if this thing doesn't work out exactly the way he figures it. It's a chance hitting a whole town. But I like it. Got class. Know what I mean? And so it's kind of wild. Let's face it. My line is not exactly soft touches and easy deals all the way. Of course, I agree. And it's that element of surprise. I like that, too. Well, I hope you guys don't think I sell pencils for a living. Talk about surprise. You should have seen this bank that I knocked Easy over. now. No places, no names. Nothing for us to know about each other. Quite right. Our own ignorance is our best insurance policy. Well, I'm getting a little itchy with these gloves on all the time in this suit. Now, the price is right. Yeah, over a million. But I don't know, can a, can a plain, ordinary town be worth that kind of cash? Why not? Take five or 6,000 average working people, give them a couple of hundred bucks every two weeks, figure it out. I already did. It's a million easy. You mean that that kind of money's lying around in small towns all over the country and nobody ever thought of this kind of hit before? It does excite the imagination. Consider the possibilities. Different town every month. We could retire in a year. It's all right with me. In a year's time, do you think we can get around to calling each other by our first names? Because these, these numbers are getting to me. Gentlemen, Miss Yes, six and seven. Good night. See you in the morning. How about a big man? Should we turn in two? Uh, I guess. You know, you think that they let you call me Pancho or Algernon, anything. Damn numbers. Learned well, gentlemen. Your movement to each location is perfectly coordinated. There will be three teams. The team leaders will be two, four, and six. You have to keep in contact through these radios. I, too, will be carrying one, but you mustn't depend on them. I can't risk this entire mission on something stupid like static or a mechanical breakdown. Now remember, timing is still the vital factor. Is that understood? Yeah. But where are we going and how do we get there? All right, gentlemen, to satisfy your curiosity, we take a town called Wellerton, which is within 500 miles of where we're standing right now. Okay, how do we get there? Glad you won't find out until tomorrow when we're about to leave. Meanwhile, there's just today to continue your training. And I want you to do it over and over and over again until it's completely automatic. Is that clear? Very well, team leaders. Start being the lucky on. Can I do for you? Well, I guess you heard. Yeah. Something about you and some of the council, huh? Uh-huh. I'm out. Yeah, if you ask me, that's a dirty, rotten shame. Oh, thanks. I expect Maggie and me will be moving on. You leaving Wellerton? Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to give you a notice. Rent's due on the first of the month. Sure hate to see you go. Oh, you get somebody to rent the house. <laughs> I don't mean that's no problem. I, I hate to see you leaving like this. 
I guess life's like that. Where are you, uh, where are you going? I don't know. I'm gonna hand in my badge tomorrow, and then we'll go over to the county seat and have a look around. <laughs> look, Pete, why don't you stick around for a while? You know, everybody in this town is your friend. But... <laughs> no, no, I mean it. Oh, well, maybe some of those old codgers on the council don't see eye to eye with you, but comes next election. There are gonna be some changes made around here. Oh, thanks, Frank, but I can't afford to wait around for an election. Besides, I wouldn't want to try something different, at least not in my own hometown, you know? You sure you won't change your mind? Well, now, don't worry. Like you say, things might change. I might be able to come back. <laughs> you bet. And believe me, I'm going to be one guy that's going to be talking around here because this is a dirty deal. Thanks, Frank. I'll see you before we go. You sure will. Now then, the bank, phone company, power station, machine shop, the uh, business entrance is on the side street, and the lumber yard. You'll have to pass the uh, auto gate in order to get to the paymaster's window. Clear? How about all the other places? Small change, too much time involved. If at all possible, avoid any killings. If you have to shoot, aim low. We just want to take the cream and then out. I already said all that. How out? Be patient, my friend. We travel first class. In and out. All right, guys, let's do it again. Tomorrow, I take over. <laughs> Honey, they're not going to dig up a new chief overnight. Okay. Okay, I promise. We'll set the date for certain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I told you, he's out. I mean, really out. As of tomorrow, you're talking to the new chief. Honey, look, well, something just came up. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later, huh? with women. She's all in the air about my taking over as chief tomorrow. Yeah, I know. It's okay. Anything I can do? Huh? Oh, no, I just thought I'd come in and clean up my desk. Sometimes, Hank. I guess it just proves you shouldn't get too used to anything. Maybe I ought to quit too. Show those old buzzers. Oh, no. no. Somebody's got to keep the peace. You'll do fine. I don't know. I, I don't know if I can. Sure you will. I'll check out tomorrow morning. Pete, look, suppose something comes up that I can't handle. Who, who can I turn to? Well, Hank, the county seat's an hour and a half away. You can call the sheriff's office there for help anytime. You know that. Yeah, I, I guess I could do that. Well, think about it. Wellington. Population 7,000. Now, what could happen here that you couldn't handle? Yeah, I guess you're right. Get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow's just another Friday.
belongings, gentlemen. Can't afford to leave anything behind. Everything okay? All right. Buckle your seat belts and relax. We have a two-hour flight ahead of us. you're wondering, our destination is a remote farm about 20 miles from the town. I was afraid to ask. I thought you'd set this thing down on the main street of the town. I was considering it, but a helicopter is a little too difficult to obtain. An aeroplane is much easier to steal. check the barn. Six and seven, the back of the house. Four and five, come with me. Be careful. They're just supposed to be the farmer and his wife, but we can't take anything for granted. How do you know there aren't any others? As of two weeks ago, when the Acme Construction Company made a telephone survey. Ready? All right, move out fast. Oh, please excuse us. Our plane just had a forced landing. 
I'm Colonel Carruthers of the Adams Air Base. Uh, oh. May we please use your phone? Oh, sure, sure. I, I, I guess so. Uh, come right in. The phone's right over there. Certainly do appreciate that. Force landing, eh? These are strange uniforms for the Air Force. Well, we're not exactly the Air Force. Hey, what are you fellas up to? Now, take it easy. Don't you try anything foolhardy. Send in two and three. Mildred! What do you fellas want? There's not much money here. Relax. You won't be hurt. You'll just be tied up and locked in a room for a couple of hours. That's all. There's a truck in the barn. Oh, yes. We're going to borrow your truck and your car. Okay, boys. Make them comfortable and secure.
Jack, you'd better get right over here. That's fine. Now let's do it again. Six and seven. You read me over. Very clear. Everything here okay. You may disconnect. This is four to six. I read you. We will now disconnect over and out. Make sure all the boards were dead. I'll say the phone company's out of business. Six and seven, do you read me? This is six to leader one. I read you loud and clear. All the birds are caged. Right, we're coming for you. Coming now. I read you loud and clear. What's your location? We're approaching the jail now. All objectives accomplished. Gentlemen, we've done it. It's collection time.
You tried your lights. I think the power is out all over the block. I'll check it. Hit the floor. Ten to twenty is only. Okay, honey, fill it up. you want to do it. For them, for this stinking town, they don't care. What kind of a man are you? You've got me and you've got your son. You're going to go out and get yourself killed? For what, Pete? For what? You stay here, you understand? Take care of your mother, son.
Pete! Boy, am I glad to see you. How'd you get in there? Oh, they took us by surprise. There's a whole bunch of them. They're pretty smart. Yeah, I noticed. Where's the key? They got them. They got all of them. They got our guns, too. Well, I can't take time to get you out of there now. Listen, don't be crazy. I tell you, there's a whole gang of them. I know. They're trying to loot the town. Go get us out, and we'll all go after them. I'll get you someone to work in that lock. Pete, I keep telling you, there's one scattergun's not enough, Pete! Johnny! Trying to take over the town. Listen, I want you to do something for me. Yeah, I don't know. Snap out of it. I want you to go get old man Weatherby, the locksmith. Bring him to the jail and tell him to open that cell door. You understand? Now, come on, get going. This is leader one to team six and seven. This is six to leader one. I read. Are you finished? On our way over to the second bank. Just leaving the machine shop. Cancel that and report to me. Speed it up. And there's some guy out there with a shotgun. Let's go! Where's Bree? He's had it. That guy with the shotgun I told you about. Hey, 
one man with a lousy shotgun. That's not bad if you ask me. Well, we missed the second bank in the market. I don't think we took half of what we should have. And we lost three men. We still took the town like we planned. Uh, we took it and lost it to one man. Better get to him, Doc. We'll need to do some talking. Stupid. You all right, Pete? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, folks. Let's go on home now. That's all of us. Better uh, keep an eye on him. You get the sheriff's office down there. You're going to need help. All right. Jack? Call the county seat. Tell the sheriff what's happened. But, Hank, all the phones are out. I don't care if you got in the car and drive over there. Well, the bridge has been out. I tried about half an hour ago. I don't care if you walk. Get in your car and drive around the bridge, but do something. Phones are out. Power's been out all the time. What's happened to us? Are we a disaster area? They hit us real hard. Yeah. Thanks, Doc. Jack, how is he? He'll be all right. I bet he's got some interesting answers. All right, we don't have much time. Start counting. Got the electricity an hour ago. That's just beautiful. All right, get on the radio. Tell Wilson we got our man. We should be there in about oh, two hours. Uh, so this is one of the birds, is it? Mm -hmm. uh, take good care of him. Sir, I, I don't get it. The governor, the FBI. What do you think this is? A traffic ticket, son? Huh? We got a five-state alarm out for them. The way I heard it, they damn near skinned your whole town out. Would have too, except for Pete Anderson. By the way, uh, where is he? He's at home, I guess. Oh, well, time to come to see me when he can. Yes, sir. I want a full written report on this. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, what? Would you mind signing the release for the prisoner? Get yourself a haircut, will you? And I don't want that report tomorrow. I want it on my desk tonight. Understand? Yes, sir. Kept my end of the bargain. 
You've all been paid. Now, after you land, you'll shave. You each have your own clothes. And don't forget, bury your jumpsuit, your parachute, and the shaver. The guns and the walkie-talkies stay here. We're now over 500 miles from Wellerton, which is way beyond any roadblock. However, I want you each to jump at 15-minute intervals, which will be about 50 miles apart. Now, for security reasons, I won't tell you where your final destination will be. However, I will guarantee each and every one of you that you'll be landing near some town or some city. Now, remember, change into your clothes, bury your parachute, your jumpsuit, and your shaver. And try to act as normally as possible. Any questions? You jump, too? All right. The pilot and I'll jump soon after we set the automatic pilot. The plane should run out of gas about 200 miles out to sea. And may we all never meet again. Oh, I see we're nearing our first target area. Number five, are you ready? seem like a huge, big joke to you, but you're in plenty of hot water. Jim, look, I'm going to lay it on the line. I just left the governor, and he's plenty burned. And right now, you're set for a one-way stretch of nothing less than 199 years. And I'm not kidding. Your friends, they made off with close to half a million, and we want it back. And we want your friends back. Now, you got yourself just one thin hole. That's all. You help us, we'll help you. Those are the governor's own words. Now, how about it? Just leave my own with me. I'll... I might have taken that you're not interested in saving your own neck. Oh, I, I wouldn't exactly say that. What exactly would you say? Now, let me get this straight. If I cooperate with you, tell you everything I know, you're going to give me a break, right? Right. What about the cigarette magazine? Okay. All right, all right. What about a television set? Right. Now. Well. I think you're going to be awful disappointed. I don't really know as much as you think I do. We'll be the judge of that. My name is Arnold, Mike Arnold. But last week I've been known by the number four. None of us have any names, just numbers. Who was the leader? He was number one. for you, gentlemen. Well, Pete, this is kind of like eating crow. 
Oh, good evening, Mrs. Anderson. Good evening. Shall I bust the sign up, Pete? Huh? Hold on, Frank. What is it you wanted to see me about? Pete, we want you to stay here uh, with us. I see. Yeah. Look at this, Pete. Take it back, will you? I'm not sure, Mr. Mayor. Well, Pete! Heaven's sake, yesterday you went down that street right in the middle of it and you made fools of every one of the council. Is that why you think I did it? For the council? Well, that's just a figure of speech. Now, look here, Anderson. You can't just walk off and leave town. I mean, after all, after what happened, you'll... Well, we'll all look like a bunch of idiots. Now, just a minute. I didn't do it to spite the council. And I didn't do it to save the honor of the town. Why did you do it? I don't know. But I guess if I have to explain it, maybe it wasn't worth doing after all. I don't understand. town of Wellerton, where the daring daylight attack continues to baffle authorities. All law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, are withholding information pending further investigation. What is known is that two of the men were killed and one captured single-handedly by Wellerton's former police chief Anderson. A five-state alarm has closed all possible avenues of escape and an early capture of the bandits is expected. I'm here with acting chief Hank Harris. Chief Harris, how has this affected your town? All right, Arnold. Let's go through it again. Where exactly were you trained? I told you, I don't know. Somewhere in the desert. Weren't they some kind of landmarks? Yeah, sagebrush and sand and cactus. If you went through a mug file, could you identify any of these men? I doubt it. We all wore beards. Was there ever a name, a, a place? Something we could go on. Not that I can remember. How about something on the TV? What do you want to see? I don't care. Anything's better than your sheriff. Stolen or missing during the last two days. 
When we get our hands on that plane, we're going to be a lot closer to unraveling this mess. I don't know. I don't know. The man that planned this is a master criminal. He's a genius. Now, he's covered himself so well, I wouldn't be surprised if we never find a plane. Or, in fact, the place where these men were trained. What are you trying to tell me? That this is some kind of a perfect trial? No, uh-uh. No. It's brilliant. But I don't think it's perfect. Now, there's got to be a flaw someplace. Like what? Like, for instance, this man. Arnold. Number four. Let's assume he's telling the truth. Each of these men didn't know each other. Each was a total stranger to the other. Except for the ringleader who hired them all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Except for number one. Now, if we could find him, he could lead us to the others. Hmm. That's kind of like looking for a needle in a haystack, isn't it? But that's the weak link. It's the only one we have to go on. If only he could help us find the top man. And now it's time to welcome back your old friend, Uncle Willie. Come on, there's got to be something better than that. He's pretty good. My kids watch him all the time. stories the last two weeks, Uncle Willie. Thank you. Thank you so very much, children. And I want you to know that Uncle Willie certainly missed you during his vacation. And I hope you all missed me, too. Now, today's story, children, is a story of excitement and of adventure. It's called Alibaba and the Fourth Thief. Arnold, we don't think you've told us everything you know about the leader, number one. Let's turn this off, shall we? No. Leave it on. What do you think this is, a hotel suite? How about it, Arnold? You think you can help us identify the leader? Number one will be Alibaba. Number two will be his manservant. Number three will be Ahmed. Ahmed is the captain of the army. And number four is Mustafa. He is the keeper of the Caliph's treasure. And number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, and all the rest of the children will play the part of the rest of the party. Now, children, just to remind you briefly of the story, there was once a young boy, his name was Alibaba. One day, as he was walking in the woods, he came upon his big room, and he saw 40 men standing in the big stone. One of the men walked over to the stone and said the magic word, Open Sesame, and lo and behold, suddenly the stone opened, and inside there was this giant cave, Alibaba was excited and thrilled. He had never seen anything like that before. Soon the men all came out of the cave and they rode away. And they closed the cave, of course, before they rode away. Now Alibaba, the brave little boy that he was, walked right over to this stone and he too said the magic words. He said, open sesame. And lo and behold, sure enough, the cave opened. And Alibaba walked in. And inside this giant cave, he saw the jewels of the whole world, diamonds. And, and gold and silver. And he was so excited and so thrilled and he got so tired looking all over the cave that he fell asleep. That night, 40 men came back. Soon they were looked to be known by all of us as the 40 thieves. And as they came back, they saw Ali Papa fast asleep. At first they were so angry that somebody had discovered their secret they were gonna kill him. When they woke him up, they saw that Ali Papa was a brave and adventurous young man. So they put him in with the gang. They made him a member of the gang. And soon Ali Baba grew up and he became the leader and the most famous of Ali Baba and the 40 Thieves. Now, children, we're... Oh, what's the matter, Cynthia? Why are you crying? I want... I want to play the old with me. Oh, well, don't cry. Don't cry, baby. After all, it's only a game.
Seven strangers coming soon While seven thousand sleep Silhouettes against the moon Like wolves to kill the sheep Nameless men have heard the cry Of silent pounding hooves While nameless men like you and